Welcome to Real Life Fiction Stories, and thank you for joining me. Why don't you come in close, because tonight I have a real honest-to-goodness true story that you can look up for yourself. A story about a real-life place in Tulare County, California, on the Akut Reservation that holds what may be the oldest image of Bigfoot, a petroglyph of what the indigenous people had called a hairy man. A story about a giant who lived among the trees and aided in the creation of people. A being not unlike the eagle or coyote, but who became saddened by what humans had done to him in the land. A story about a creature that eats flesh and bone together, and whom parents warn their children about, and the danger of hairy man carrying them off. Hocheu, also known as Painted Rock, or CA-TUL-19, is a rock shelter on the Thule River associated with a prehistoric village, and now lies within the boundaries of the Thule River Indian Reservation, established in 1873. It is a sacred location to tribal members, featuring many petroglyphs within the rock structure that have not yet been fully interpreted. The most dominant petroglyph at Painted Rock is that of Hairy Man, measuring 2.6 meters high by 1.9 meters wide, and is red, black, and white. He is a two-legged creature with his arms spread wide, and has what appears to be long hair and large eyes. The Yakuts identify the lines coming from his eyes as tears, because Hairy Man is sad according to their creation story. Next to Hairy Man, a female and a child stand with him. The female, presumed to be the mother, measures 1.8 meters high by 1.2 meters wide, and is solely red, also a two-legged creature with her arms open, splaying five fingers. The child measures 1.2 meters high by 1 meter wide, and like his mother, is solely red, stands on two legs, and has five fingers, and an unusually rounded head reminiscent of a sagittal crest. In 1973, at the request of the tribe, E.B. Johnstone began gathering some of the traditional stories by members of the reservation, publishing their work in 1975. The daughter of a tribal elder, who had been caretaker of the pictograph site in the early 1900s, identified Harry Man as being the same as Bigfoot, with Johnstone who further noted that Harry Man was described by the Thule River Indians as a creature that was like a great big giant with long shaggy hair. And since Bigfoot also meets that description, the two most likely were the same. This is what their legends say. All of the birds and animals of the mountains went to Hocheo to make people. Eagle, chief of all the animals, asked each how they wanted people to be. After a brief consideration, each animal took a turn and said what they had to say. Fish was the first to speak. People should know how to swim like me, so let them be able to hold their breath and swim very deep. Eagle nodded, and all agreed. Hummingbird was next. People should be fast like me, so let them have good feet and endurance. Again, the assembly was in agreement. And it was Eagle's turn. People should be wise, wiser than me, so people will help animals and take care of the earth. The animals looked at each other with confirmation. This would be so. And so Turtle stepped forward with his contribution. People should be able to protect themselves like me, so let's give them courage and strength. Then Lizard addressed the meeting, adding, People should have five fingers like me, so that people can make baskets, bows, and arrows. Owl wily and shrewd, glided down from the trees as it was now his turn. People should be good hunters like me, so give them knowledge and cunning. Condor had been circling above and landed next to Owl to speak. People should be different from us, so give them hair, not feathers or fur to keep them warm. Agreed, Eagle spoke for the group. And what do you say, Coyote? The Eagle's eyes were fixed on what the others thought was the wind in the flowers when something came out of the grass and shadows and stepped forward. Coyote circled the group as he spoke. People should be like me because I am smart and tricky, so have them walk on all fours. Hairy Man, who had not said anything yet, shook his head and said, No, people should walk on two legs like me. All of the other animals agreed with Hairy Man, and Coyote became very angry. He challenged Hairy Man to a race, and they agreed whoever won could decide how people should walk. They gathered at the waterfall below Hocheo to begin the race. Coyote started and took a shortcut. Hairy Man was wiser than Coyote and knew that Coyote would cheat to win, and people would have to walk on all fours. So Hairy Man stayed behind and helped Eagle, Condor, and the others to make people. They went back to the rock and drew people on two legs on the ground. The animals breathed on them, and people came out of the ground. 
Harry Man was very pleased and went to people, but when they saw Harry Man, they were scared and ran away. That made Harry Man sad. When Coyote came back and saw what they had done, he was very angry and drew himself on the rock eating the moon. All the other animals drew their picture on the rock as well, so people would remember them. Harry Man was sad because people were afraid of him, so he drew himself sad. That is why Harry Man's picture is crying and making a symbol for rain to this day, and that is how people were made. When people took over and spread out all over the mountains, taking all the land and eating all the food, animals didn't have any place to go. Eagle, chief of all the animals, told the animals that they could not remain in their traditional places, because people had taken them. He asked them where they wished to go. Eagle said, What are you going to become? What will you be? I myself am going to fly up high in the air and live on squirrels and sometimes on deer. Harry Man said, I will go live among the big trees and hunt only at night when people are asleep. Dog said, I will stay with people and be their friend. I will follow them, and perhaps I will get something to eat in that way. Buzzard said, When something dies, I will smell it. I will go there and eat it. Crow said, When I see something lying dead, I will pick out its eyes. Coyote said, I will go about killing grasshoppers. That is how I will live. Hummingbird said, I will go to the flowers and get my food from them. Condor said, I will not stay here. I will go far off into the mountains. Perhaps I will find something to eat there. Woodpecker said, I will get acorns and make holes in the trees to store them in. Blue Jay said, I am going to make trees grow over the hills. I will work. Rat said, I will go where there are old trees and make my house in them. Mouse said, I will run here, there, and everywhere. I shall have holes, and perhaps I can live that way. Trout said, I will live in the water, and perhaps I can find something to eat there. That was the time when the animals stopped being like us and scattered. Now Harry Man was a creature that was like a great big giant with long shaggy hair. His long shaggy hair made him look like a big animal. He was good in a way, because he ate the animals that might harm people. He kept the grizzly bear, mountain lion, wolf, and other large animals away. During hot summer nights, all the animals would come out together down from the hills to drink out of the Thule River. Harry Man liked to catch animals down by the river. He would eat them up, bones and all. It was pleasant and cool down by the river on hot summer nights. That is when grown-ups liked to take a swim. Even though people feared that Harry Man might come to the river, people still liked to take a swim at night. Parents always warned their children. Don't go near the river at night. You may run into Harry Man. Harry Man usually eats animals, but parents said, If he can't find any animals and he is very hungry, he will eat you. The Harry Man doesn't leave a speck or trace. He eats you up, bones and all. We won't know where you've gone or what has happened to you. Some people say, The Harry Man still roams around the hills near Thule River. He comes along the trails at night and scares a lot of people. When you hear him, you know it's something very big because he makes a big sound, not a little sound. Children are cautioned not to make fun of his picture on painted rock, or play around that place, because he would hear you and come after you. Parents still warn their children. You are going to meet him on the road if you stay out too late at night. The children have learned to always come home early. Painted rock was first recorded and described in modern history by Garrick Mallory in 1889 who stated that the paintings were famous and well-known in the area, and in standard petroglyph fashion was created by being pecked, painted, and then pecked again to ensure a long-lasting effect. He included in his record that Harry Man was painted as a person weeping. The arms and hands are in the exact position for the gesture for making rain. The mother and child are described as human figures for making gestures for negotiation, or more specifically, nothing or nothing here. Julian Stewart noted in 1929 the paintings as well, but added no further details than those offered by Mallory. In 1949, Frank Latta detailed the site by stating that the Indians readily recognize the characters which represent animals, but they offer no other explanation for the geometrical designs and line drawings than to give them the Indian name for circle, triangle, square, or other common figures. They do identify drawings of a few mythological characters. He also noted that the year-round occupied villages were placed at important places, either where paintings were, or at some place where Indian ceremonies were performed. Archaeologically, the village at Painted Rock was occupied in the late prehistoric around 500 years ago, 
since it is believed that the paintings were present prior to the village, the paintings are most likely 500 to 1,000 years old. Researcher C.D.W. Claylow estimated in 1978 that the paintings were made around A.D. 500, but could be as old as A.D. 1, or as young as A.D. 1200, approximately 2,000 to 700 years old. Nowhere on Earth has an older possible representation of Bigfoot been found. Hundreds of years before the Patterson-Gimlin film, an almost identical image was laid upon stone by people who had lived in the area for thousands of years. Was this a creature that came to the artist in a dream, only to be replicated in a hoax hundreds of years later by Patterson and Gimlin? Perhaps it existed once, but is now extinct. Maybe, just maybe, the creature is real, and lives on hidden deep in the forests hunting at night, avoiding the people who ran from him in fear and stole his land.